Talk. We're your hosts, Monica, Gianna, and Mia. Today we're going to be discussing recent film phenomena. From Barbenheimer to video games being introduced in film, we're covering it all today. Or at least trying to, in 15 minutes. Today's guest is someone who is on the front lines for every movie release, Leah McKechnie. Leah has worked in a plethora of media fields, ranging from film production to running various social media accounts. She has... She also has years of experience in photography and audio production, giving her a significant advantage when it comes to media literacy. Is there anything I missed in regards to your illustrious career in media? Please, by all means, extend your repertoire. Hello, my name is Leah McKechnie, and I work in the social media field, so it's really important for me to stay up to date with pop culture trends, and popular movies have a large impact on social media trends so I try to stay on top of watching the newest movies so I know what's going on and I can provide the best service to my clients. Before we get into the main topic, what was the last movie you all watched in theaters? So the two most recent films I saw in theaters were The Eras Tour and The Barbie Movie. But before that, I saw Past Lives, which I actually want to talk about because I kind of have a hot take. I did not like that movie at all. I thought the pacing was weird. I didn't really enjoy the character development. And a lot of people loved that movie and had great things to say about it. But I was not feeling it. So, yeah, that's that's my hot take for today. Do not go see Past Lives. It's not worth it. I've actually never seen it, but I did see The Exorcist Believer the other weekend. Oh, those are pretty good. I saw the Taylor Swift Eras Tour movie, and it was almost as amazing as the actual concert, but I think the actual concert definitely beats it out. Yeah. The last one I saw was Bottoms. I saw it a few weeks ago. It was pretty funny. All right, now getting into the topic, let's start with talking about Barbenheimer. Now, this has really changed cinema culture and changed the way we watch and even appreciate movies. Social media played a large role in the popularity of the Barbenheimer movement, spearheading the dressing up for movies trend, as well as memes about the collision of themes during Barbenheimer. How do you think this affected the box office numbers of the films? I think that a lot of the trends associated with the Barbie movie and Oppenheimer definitely affected the box office sales. Um... It's definitely important for people to feel like they're in on the joke or the inside trend on social media, and both Barbie and Oppenheimer use this as a marketing tactic for their movies, encouraging viewers to dress up and really play into the idea of the movie when they are going to watch it, and obviously people are going to post about that on social media for attention and to be included as part of the trend. So every time somebody dresses up for the Barbie movie and goes to watch it and then shares that on social media, whether it's Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, whatever it is, other people are going to watch that and feel more pressure to be a part of that trend, leading them to buy a ticket, dress up, go see the movie. And then the two of them together, Barbie and Oppenheimer, making this whole idea of Barbenheimer is just like the amalgamation of two trends together. So I think it's just like a cycle where if you use your marketing tactics right and you get social media involved in hashtags and dressing up and posting it, you'll definitely increase your sales. Yeah, I agree. I feel like with the two being released on the same day, it definitely created like a lot of um, excitement over the movies and encouraged people to go see them. Yeah, I agree too, because I feel like it was like, people were not really seeing one or the other. It was like, you're seeing both, like, right after it's each other. experience, yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, since we're on the topic, Barbie started this trend of niche film franchises, and there's already a few movies lined up for production in the toy doll sector, and it looks like gaming franchises are soon to follow with the Mario movie and Five Nights at Freddy's being prime examples of this trend. Do you see niche film franchises as being a success or problematic? I think that making niche film franchises will be a commercial success for Hollywood, but I do think it's a little bit problematic for consumers because what a lot of people aren't realizing is that these niche franchises and movies are actually just marketing tactics, and if you look at the Barbie movie as one big ad, it's pretty easy to see that it's just to sell more toys, more clothes, whatever it is, and the more that they make 
toy movies about like cars or Hot Wheels or whatever it is. It's going to be to bring back the toy market. And I don't think a lot of people are realizing how connected this is to our inflated economy. And a lot of these film franchises are being brought to like get families and young children back out into movie theaters since so many people can stream um, movies or shows for their kids or families from home. They've kind of lost that market. So by bringing back these types of movies, it kind of caters to everybody of all ages. So you'll make more money and you can advertise more products. So I definitely think it will be a success for Hollywood and the studios, but I do think it's gonna be problematic for people who take this as mere entertainment when it's a lot more than that. Yeah, I definitely think that Hollywood's really grasping just for more money. Um, I think that they just saw that Oh, a toy doll movie did really well. The Barbie's not the only one. Let's pump out a few more. Yeah, just mm-hmm. keep doing it and see how it works until it doesn't work and it mm-hmm. all of a sudden they're not making any more money off of it. Well, now that we've discussed the Barbie half of Barbenheimer, let's switch to Oppenheimer. What I noticed during the film was the influence that it had on how we understand history and how film might even change history. Do you think that cinema is a new determinant of how society understands history? I definitely think that cinema has been a good determinant of how society understands history, specifically mass-produced cinema that started being produced around the age of Hollywood was informed informing society of morals, ideas, what to value, what to buy, what to believe, who to vote for. So cinema has always been a tool for helping society understand history. And um, in a culture where our cinema and our media is more and more mass produced, people are going to rely on the knowledge handed to them through these media representations to understand history. And people aren't really gonna do their own research or go out of their way to go read a book or anything, especially with social media. Everything is handed to you so easily. So you don't really have to do your own research. So cinema is definitely going to continue to be an informant to society for understanding history. And I guarantee if you asked a majority of the viewers about Oppenheimer and the actual events, they would tell you that the movie was more of a documentary and trust the depiction portrayed in that movie as the truth without doing their own research of the actual events or comparing it to other documentaries made on that subject. We also can't neglect the fact that society can also influence film, as shown with movies like Bottoms and No Hard Feelings. Do you believe pop culture has too big of an influence on film? Could catering to younger audiences be a deterrent to the rest of cinema consumers or are production companies simply keeping up with the times? So I actually don't think that pop culture has that much of a direct influence on film. I think that filmmakers use pop culture to make better products that will sell more. I don't think that audiences actually have that much of a say on what is produced. Um, I also think that it's kind of a cause and effect relationship. So even though culture is ordinary, Frankfurt School, Raymond Williams, all that, um, pop culture is definitely created through the mass media and audiences take that in and make their own representations of that and understandings and go back to make their own pop culture. So pop culture and film isn't really one way back and forth. They're going to go between each other and it's going to affect what is created and how it's interpreted. But um, for the second question, if catering to younger audiences could deter cinema consumers, I don't think it will. I think that America, specifically American viewers, have a low tolerance um, for, like, anything intellectual. And I don't think adults or older people have any problem engaging with media that is catering to a younger demographic. Um, And yes, of course, production companies are trying to keep up with the times, but they're only trying to keep up with the times so that they can make money. It's not just to cater to whatever an audience wants. Yeah, I agree with you, Leah. That, you know, that makes a lot of sense now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah, yeah. Makes way more sense. I hadn't thought about it like that. Yeah, me neither. Okay, well, that's all the questions we have for you today, Leah. Thank you so much for being 
on today's episode of Real Talk. Yeah, of course. I really appreciate the opportunity to speak on these type of subjects. I love talking about this type of stuff, and I had a really great time with you guys today. All right, to close out the show, we're bringing back this This or or that. that. All right, to start off, got to start with the obvious. Barbie or Oppenheimer? I have got to say Barbie. Um, I, to be honest, I didn't even see Oppenheimer. <laughs> um, I know. I still, like, I still want to see it, but I'm not much of a war movie kind of person. Um, and Barbie was, I just love Barbie, so it was awesome. Yeah, I think I might have to go with Barbie. Margot Robbie's just, yeah. she's too good. And come on. Oh my God, why am I blanking on his name? Ryan Gosling. Y- yeah, <laughs> Ryan Gosling. Like, come on. It's too good. Too mm-hmm. good. Oppenheimer was pretty good, though, I will say. Yeah, you know what? I think I have to go with Oppenheimer. Whoa. Yeah, just, I don't know. I have this sick sense of humor where I can take, like, any serious movie or horror movie and just make fun of it the entire time, so it was really... That's valid, honestly. an experience. (laughs) Okay, how about old school horror movies or modern horror movies? Ooh. I mean, I haven't seen a really good newer horror movie and like i couldn't even tell you i think the last one i saw was that like actually scared me had to have been like lights out have you seen that one yeah oh my gosh that one is so scary or like maybe um the nun's just scary because she's just creepy like you know what i mean (laughs) but like i feel like old school horror movies are just they're just classic you know what i mean i feel like you can't beat them you know and i feel like most of the modern movies are like twists on older horror movies yeah Mm -hmm. yeah i don't know i I like scary movies, but for me, they have to have some other element in them because I get too scared. So I do kind of like the modern horror movies because a lot of them have an element of, like, comedy or, like, something like that where I can, like, distract myself from, like, the scariness of it. But I I don't know. I do, like... Nothing can really beat the classics. Yeah, but then you get, like, Conjuring. Those are pretty good. Like, Mm -hmm. and because they're based off, like, a true story, too, which I feel like adds to the yeah makes it (laughs) 10 times scarier yeah for sure all right what about animated or live action movies live action i some animated it's just too (laughs) i don't know i like live action like you think i think of like marvel like Mm, star wars you know what i mean i feel like those are so much more like intense you know what i mean they're so good with cgi too so i just feel like but I, i like animated action movies but definitely live for me yeah i think so too Live action movies for sure. Although I will say that the new Spider Man movie that came out over the summer, mm. it was like bordering on like okay, this is almost as good as live action. Really, just because they really got the emotions across really well for an animated movie. All right, that is all we have for you guys today. Thanks so much for listening to this week's episode of Real Talk, and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.